scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Exodus chapter 4, please. Let's look at verse 2 and verse 17. Would you be a bit patient? Thank you. Exodus chapter 4. And the Lord said unto him, what is in your hand? And he said what? Let's go to verse 17 for time's sake. It says, you shall take this rod in your hand and with it you will do signs. When you stand before Pharaoh, you are not allowed to speak too much. Let the rod keep doing the speaking. There must be something you carry that will continue speaking when your mouth is shut. Are we together? One of the principles of dominion is you must bet something out of you that immortalizes your impact. There must be a product or something that comes out of you that keeps speaking even when you are silent. Bill Gates is in your home. Zuckerberg is in your home. You drive him, he comes back. You bring him back by yourself. That's dominion. Are we together? You drive Coca-Cola and cost them and cost them and in three days they are back. They don't fight you when you drive them because they understand the addictive power of their influence over you. I hope you understand what I'm saying. And I hope you understand I'm not being sarcastic. You get the idea? Praise the Lord. Listen, say in the name of Jesus, I obtain grace to be valuable. I obtain grace to be exceptional. Lagos is a good land, but the increase only looks for men of value. When you are valuable, listen, you know you are valuable when no, no amount becomes too much to reward you. At that point, you are priceless. Look at this. If this handkerchief is, say, a thousand naira, please hold it. No matter how wealthy you are, you will not pay a million for this, ordinarily. Are we together? Why? Because you perceive that although it is valuable, it is not that valuable. Now, if you are this handkerchief, in my example, people can give you a thousand naira, but when you demand for a million naira, they think it's unfair. I told you yesterday, everybody is a giver. Truly. Can you rise to a level of value that makes no price becomes unfair, uh, that makes for no price to become unfair on you? That someone can look at you today and still give you a property worth millions and, and say, please, let it be a privilege for me to bless you because you are that valuable. I made up my mind as a person that in the name of the Lord, I would not just be a preacher, but I would be valuable. That I would never have encounter with anyone and then you say, oh, it's nice to meet you. Go away. No. No. It's a vow and a covenant that I made with myself. So it calls for study. It calls to expand your understanding. 
As a preacher, you talk to all kinds of people. If you're a medical doctor, the limit of your profession is just around the hospital and all of this. But as a man of God, you're talking with diplomats, you're talking with business people, you're talking with politicians. You must sustain the intelligence that communicates God to their sphere. It is not an impartation. It is knowledge that is acquired. It's truth that is bought. This is what will make you valuable. And I tell you the truth, anybody, any preacher, anyone in ministry who is not ready to be valuable on this wise must be ready for empty pews. Your pastor is vast, intelligent, skilled. That's why you come here. That's why you love him. That's why no amount you sow into his life becomes a regret. You don't go back saying, I would have given, ah, was it a wise choice? You see, when you regret, it's not because you are not a giver. You compare what you gave versus. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, may we sustain the grace to be valuable. Listen, there are many of us, we need to fold many complimentary cards, respectfully speaking, shelve them and go back to do our homework. There's no need going around and saying, look, I'm a great musician. You've not seen anointing until you invite me. If you have to market yourself on that wise, it's already a sign that you must go back and say, God, you called me. This, this, you called me. Place something both on my mouth, my lips. It says my heart is indicting a good matter. Yeah, I speak of excellent things. Then it says my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Hallelujah. Every good thing runs away from me. Lord, there is a dimension of value I need to step into. Praise the Lord. I can cook. Who eats your food? You see, if kings... I, I hope you don't find this insulting. I'm just stretching us. Now, listen, let me tell you this. Please listen. Hallelujah. Are we together? Until kings look for you, you are not there. The real wealth and honor is in the palace, not outside. So you can start from Shushan like Hadassah, but don't end there. You can even come close to the gate like Mordecai, but don't remain there. Your real honor happens in the palace. You have a business and kings have not turned their attention. You are not valuable enough. Keep pressing. While they are clapping for you, let them do the clapping while you do the growing. You will grow to a point when you feed kings, you will eat from the treasury of kings. It is very easy to rise when we contend to be exceptional. It was Dr. Murdoch that said, your similarity creates your comfort, but it's your difference that creates your rewards. Birds of the same feather flop together, but when they are hungry, they flop together in unity when they move. But when they are hungry, every one of them, I mean, geography tells us they have skills. They have different skills to catch prey. When you become like everyone else, you become easily replaceable. Let me define what it means. You see, to be valuable means to be given an impression that you are not easily replaceable. It is true that no man is indispensable, but become so difficult to replace that even after complaining, they'll say, well, there's nothing we can do. We will still have to make do with you. Please make up your mind that I will be valuable. Make up your mind. I will be valuable. That the day I have an interaction with my destiny helper, I will not talk to him twice. Once is enough. Hallelujah. The gift of a man. Let's do it one more time. Makes room for him. This is Lagos. This is your real estate company. This is your business. This is ministry. There is no space for you. And it has nothing to do with sentiments. But when God anoints you and you walk on your skill, virtue, exceptional Christ-like virtue, backed up by intelligence that is beyond argument, you bring these twofold dimensions and life will shift and give you your space. It will not be an issue of tribalism. It will not be an issue of gender. 
There are not too many valuable people on earth. There are many human beings. But there are not too many valuable people on earth. Nobody likes me. You may be right, but why should they like you? Forget about the liking part. Why should they like you? It's an honest question you must ask. Why should, because it's fraud. When, if you follow me, how many of you, watch this, how many of you have climbed a bike or Uber or whatever, and then you, well, not Uber, they, they, they use the GPS system, but just a bike man, and he tells you he's taking you somewhere, he tells you he knows the place, and later on he, he will pass the place and say, sorry, uh, you, are you new in Lagos? I say, well, you know how this thing is. I'm, I'm not, uh, where did you even say again? You see, the person was bold enough to start going, and look at the speed he was moving around, and then you are just loitering around town, your time is going, and then you ask him, and then he will forcefully admit that I'm not exact, let's help ourselves. Now, you don't follow such a person. Hallelujah. One of the levels of leadership that they teach in business is leadership by results. That people not only follow you because you are skilled and all of that, people need to see real results. And let me tell you, don't downplay the place of results. Nobody will follow anybody who doesn't have results. They may love you, they may pray for you, but they will not follow you. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me. I dare you, follow me and I will make you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you. Let's look at, oh dear. The second kingdom secret that I want to teach quickly, if we stop here, that's, that's all right. Please do not forget this one. In fact, let's, can we pray in tongues for one minute before I start teaching this? Hallelujah. Second Samuel chapter nine. I call it the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Please write it down. We live in a world of men. Please understand. The earth, the heavens, even the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the sons of men. The cosmos is a domain that is controlled and managed by man. If you know God alone, you will do well, but you will not succeed in the cosmos. You need to know both God and man. Please listen very carefully. Hmm. Most believers say it doesn't matter. It matters. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. One king loves a woman and she becomes queen. The same king hates a woman and she ceases to be queen. Please do not say it does not matter. The gatekeepers in this realm are men. And if you do not understand the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers, connecting every man from where you are to where you need to be is the ministry of a destiny helper. Let's hurry up. Second Samuel chapter 9, please. From verse 1. Please look up. Let me do the reading. And David said, Is there any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? We're reading the first 11 verses too. And there was in the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. Three. And the king said, this and that and that and that and then let's go to... Okay, hold on. Please go to verse 3 again. He said, And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son, which is what? Incapacitated. Someone is about to be lifted who does not have the ability in himself. 
4. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodeba. And, the, and King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, from Lodeba. Now, when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold your servant. Be patient with the reading. David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely what? Show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. And I will restore. This is, you see that now? I will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? When it happens only once, it's not favor. It's breakthrough. Favor must be consistent. Continually. Read on. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am. He would have said, you are speaking negatively. Get out of my palace. But when God plants a man's heart to be connected towards you, there is nothing the devil can do about it. Next verse. And the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained to Saul and to his house. Thou therefore, now look up please, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Look at this kind of thing. You sent me, I obeyed you, and now you are saying the man you sent me to bring. I and my sons will till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the, first, the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Joshua Selman, thy master's son shall eat all way at my table. Now watch this. The Bible ends this with a very terrible information that this Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. So the king looks at a man with 15 sons, 20 servants, and says, leave all of them. Go to Lodeba. Go and look for a man crippled who has admitted he was a living dog. Bring him and he will eat at my table while you farm for him. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. In a moment, a man's life is changed because a man loved. See, the Bible says, and Jesus, Luke chapter 2, I think, and verse 52. And Jesus grew in wisdom, listen carefully, in stature and in favor with God. And when you have favor with God, you will know him. You will have encounters, but you will be broke. You will fail. You will suffer. You need favor with men. It's true. Please write this down. Destiny helpers are people equipped, empowered, ordained, and assigned by God to help you fulfill your destiny. They are not people who just come. They are ordained. They are assigned. They are empowered by God to help you fulfill your destiny and also to take you to the next level of your life. Let's hurry up. You can get the tapes. It is God that blesses. But you would have heard me say it again and again that all blessings come from God through men. To men. Nothing comes from God directly to men. It comes from God through men to men. Please say it one more time, everybody. From God through men to men. Your promotion from God through men to men. Your property from God through men to men. Your miracle from God through men to men. If God says yes and the middle man says no, the answer is no. I wish I had time. Let's do a little Bible study. The Bible tells us, I would always want to use this scripture. Did you know that David in the wilderness, already God had rejected Saul as king. We are Bible people. Is that true? And now David was in the wilderness having visions of himself as the next king. And between God and David was a man called Samuel. 
God said yes. Samuel said no. David remained in the wilderness. David's life was being delayed and almost wasted in the wilderness because a man disagreed with God. And you thought that God would just bypass him and say, I am God. David, I anoint you. God had to come and plead with Samuel and say, how long will you weep? Seeing that I have rejected Saul as king. God himself, not bypassing men. This is the world of men. Believers, please hear me. Our advantage is not just our spiritual connection, but our understanding that when God wants to lift you, he will connect you to destiny helpers. Hallelujah. There are four dimensions or four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run them very quickly in two or three minutes. Number one, the first dimension of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. Divine connectors. Second Kings chapter five. There's no need turning there. I'll just tell you the story. Remember the story of Naaman? The Bible says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. The Bible says he was a valiant man in war. But the Bible says he was leprous. Are we together now? And then the Bible says one time they captured a slave girl. And the little maid looked at him and said, Oh, that my servant, you know, that the king, that Naaman would go to meet a prophet and etc., etc. He argued here and there, but eventually he went to meet Elisha. And the Bible says when he came to meet Elisha, Elisha did not even go out to salute him. He told him, okay, go to the Jordan, bath seven times, you will be cleansed. And the man got angry. He said, I mean, uh, with my pedigree, this man did not even come out to acknowledge me and so on and so forth. And it was the little girl that also advised him. Divine connectors don't have what it takes to bless you, but they can link you with who has what it takes. Now, listen very carefully. These are the systems of dominion in the kingdom. They may not have a job, but he may be at the park holding a flyer that doesn't make sense. Walk in Canada and he's waving it. He's a bus conductor and you are laughing at him, yet you do not know that the vision you saw, that's how it will come to pass. You will collect that little thing and look at it and see a number and call jokingly and that becomes the next level of your life. It takes discernment to identify divine connectors because they come in fashions that are not receivable. You will need discernment. A destiny connector can be your little child. He talks nonsense every day except that that day the spirit of the Lord is upon him. Mommy, why don't we pray in this house? And you think he's just talking as a little child. And it's in that prayer you have the vision that will become a great business. You need discernment. Divine connectors. Many of us pass them every day on the streets of Lagos. The Bible says to learn from the ant. The Bible says to honor all men. Do you know why? Because the list of people can still be used by God. If God used a donkey, he can use a bus conductor. God can use the person plating you. And while they are gisting in the salon and you are listening, they will communicate one information that fills the gap you have been looking for. Sustain discernment believers. Divine connectors. Number two, very quickly. The second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence. These are gatekeepers. They have what it takes to bless you. They have the resources, the track record, and the credibility. No man thrives just like that. There are times that you have the skill and the gift, but you do not have access to the gate. You will need someone who is already at the gate to recommend you. Their voices, their track record, their credibility can speak for you and they can lift you overnight. These are men who can endorse you. One speaking over your life from them there are people in Lagos, one signature can give you and your siblings a job. It's true. It's not an issue of a prayer point. The answer is with them. It is within their power. Sometimes believers say, it doesn't matter, God. It's only you I seek. You are right, but you are wrong. You are very wrong. And, and sometimes if you don't understand this, I tell you, since, listen, unbelievers know this. It's an advantage. 
They do not trivialize yes. men of influence. Men of influence. Men of influence. Many times we insult rich people, we insult blessed people, we, we neglect people's track records because we cannot see what happened. When they are in the cave of Adulam, you don't see it. You only see the manifestation. And you can see a blessed man and say, what is there? It was his father, not a rich man. If my father too was a rich man. And you see, the moment you dishonor men, you close the door for access. It's true. Isn't it amazing that in many territories it's foreigners that come and eat of the blessings in the land because the people there trivialize the nobles. I never see men of influence and pretend they are not there. I honor them vocally, unashamedly. I'm friends to politicians. I'm friends to men of... I'm friends with people in the military. I don't fight them. I don't curse them. They need me, but I need them. There's, there's nothing to lie about. We live in a wicked world. <laughs> yes, sir. Are we together? The body of Jesus is hanging on the cross, pastor. No prayer warrior could bring that body down. It took a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea to bring the body down. Please do not reject influence. Joseph is dying with his dream in the prison. Pharaoh is there with one decree that can set him to be the prime minister of Egypt. But the middleman forgot. The middleman did what? Forgot. And then when God was ready to leave Joseph, he gave a dream that no astrologer could interpret. And when, can, can, look at this. Do you know that there are certain levels of influence if you don't rise to God cannot use you in certain ways? Because showing you the vision is useless. You don't have the influence to do anything about it. Listen, there were covenant people in Egypt Yet God could not come and give them the dream of the famine coming because they didn't have the capacity to do anything about it. So he came to the Pharaoh himself. And when the Pharaoh had, if Pharaoh, if the Israelites were disturbed about the dream, would anything be done? But when the Pharaoh is disturbed, he can shake his government. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Not God sent for Joseph, the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Please understand this success system. It is a secret in the kingdom. This is what makes people to rise miraculously. One endorsement, please help this person, signed this and that. And the person looks at it and looks at you and says, whose son are you? You say, well, that's not the issue. Look, focus on what I brought. <laughs> Listen, I'm saying this so you don't pray carelessly. When you are praying, you don't just say, help us of my destiny, come. It's not a very wise prayer. You know what and who to call. Lord, I need men of influence in this season of my life. I have the grace, I can be on air, the world can hear me, but there is no one to connect me. And God says, I know how to make it happen. Come for Wafbeck. And whilst you are seated, pastor will say, turn to your neighbor. Be discerning. You don't know who that neighbor is. Maybe let's try. Turn to your neighbor and say, God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Forgive me, my time is up. I have to rush. Now, watch this. Please just lend me a few more minutes to just tidy this up. Look up, please. Men of influence, you must pray them in your life. Especially if you know that your background does not have any advantage. You know what I'm talking about. You must pray. Pray with understanding. 
Lord, take me out of this place. Someone can like you and just say, I don't know, but something tells me to help you. When that happens after this conference, call pastor and say, pastor, that's it. It happened. It happened. Hallelujah. There are many ways to pay for things. The cheapest is through relationships. There are seven kinds of currencies. Money is the least of them. If you pay for everything with money, you are poor. Relationship is currency. Show me the receipt of the things that were bought by relationship. It's not always about money. Hallelujah. Number three. The third category of destiny helpers that you need in your life, they are called gifted people. Sometimes you just need skilled people, not advisors, not, you need people who can get the job done. When I came to your church and watched the protocol, the greeters and all the wonderful people, I said they are gifted people in this church. You need gifted people because there are times you need results to be produced. There are companies wasting money every time because they hire all kinds of people that came by sympathy, they came by family relationships, and the long and short of it is that there's no productivity. You will need to pray, Lord, minimize my wastage by bringing people who are nations in one person. It's a real prayer. Let me tell you this. The biggest companies in the world do not necessarily have a crowd of people. They have a few people with the brain of nations. And sometimes you just need to pray and say, Lord, make my life easy. Bring gifted people to my life. Bring gifted people to my life. Bring gifted people to my life. Are we together? Yes. Yes. You will need very gifted people. Please write this scripture down. 1 Samuel chapter 16 from verse 17 and 18. Just, just leave it there. We'll, we'll, we'll not be able to turn there. 1 Samuel 16, 17 and 18. You need gifted people. I pray this as a leader. I pray this as a person. When you meet gifted people, Lord, send a gifted driver to drive me. It's a good prayer. You, you die for nothing because of someone's carelessness. Lord, send a gifted driver to drive the truck in my company. You don't buy a truck, 100 million, and somebody will capsize it in two weeks. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Send a gifted representative in my company. Not someone who goes and kills every... He closes the doors that God... You prayed, you fasted, you sowed, sees the doors open. He casually closed it back. Because he could not represent you well. It is great to find gifted people who love God and love you. Number four. The last category of destiny helpers this one you have to pray it all the days of your life they are called burden bearers burden bearers hmm. who are they they are trusted please listen and faithful people who will stay with you through the storms they will stay with you through challenges until your glory is revealed Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16. The Bible tells us about um, a dear woman called Ruth. Remember the whole story? And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And where thou lodgest, I will lodge. And thy people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. Let's keep reading in our minds. Your pain will be my pain. Your tears will be my tears. Let me tell you something. And if you find 10 of these people in your life, you are the most fortunate person alive today. It's true. Let me repeat it. If you find 10 of these people in truth, you are the most fortunate person alive today. Burden bearers are an endangered species. 
In the presence of interest, everybody is a saint. In the presence of interest, everybody loves you. But when you carry the cross, when you feed 5,000 with two fish, with five loaves and two fish, why wouldn't you be king? But when you carry the cross, only John will stand there. Be careful when men say, become our king. Because the same men will say, crucify him. Let his blood be upon our head. Every great leader knows this. The applauds of men is not necessarily a reflection of their loyalty. If you have not joined me to cry, I don't trust you. No. I don't trust you. If the only thing you have eaten is my food, I don't trust you. If the only thing you have done is clap for me, I don't trust you. I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, please listen to me. Everybody in this life will at one point or the other go through situations and circumstances that may test and try your faith. Some of you are in one now. You will need the gift of men and women who can look at you and say, it was never about your singing. And I pray for you, may that person be your spouse. Because if that person is not your spouse, listen, there are times that even Jesus weeps. You don't weep because you are no longer the son of God. You weep because what is before you will require certain levels of sacrifice. There are times the company may plunge down and to your shock, you didn't expect it. There are times that you have things happen around your life. What happens at those times? You will need burden bearers. Let me tell you, these men will show up and stand with you and say, if you go to the prison, I'm there with you. Listen, Covenant Christian Center, don't just pray for burden bearers. Be burden bearers. Listen, I want you to get to a point where you love your pastor unconditionally. We live in a time now where everybody around, everybody is warning everybody, everybody is pointing fingers at everybody, you know, and all of that, and we have to be careful. Every great leader prays for people who love them unconditionally. Don't pray for burden bearers until you are one. Listen, my life's goal aside from being a man of God as I prepare to round up, it's not only to be a preacher and to travel and minister to people. I truly pray that God will make me a shoulder that many can lean on. Yes. When you hear me preach, you think I'm holding a rod. The Bible said, thy rod and thy staff. It's not only a rod I'm holding. I'm also holding a staff. Two of them are sticks, but they don't do the same thing. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Look at me. How many of us have been responsible for the prolonging of the pain of others? Whereas you would have been there to say, listen, I don't know what happened in the office. They said they charged you with fraud. I'm not interested. I just want to know you are fine. I hear you might go to the prison next week, but I'm here to say, let's pray. I didn't come to argue. I didn't come to find out who is right or wrong. I just came to hold your hands and while they cry, you hold them. You raise me up so I could stand on mountain. You raise me up. I am strong. When I am on your shoulder, you raise me up. Listen to me. I'm rounding up. This is my final session with us. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. In this life, when you truly become a burden bearer, not just a destiny connector. 
I know we're all smiling here, but there are people who have been wounded through the years. And they are standing here right now saying, oh God, can I not trust one person in my life? Can I not open up my heart to one person and just cry and know that I'm safe while I cry? Men are men. And sometimes what they need is not argument. What happened? Why are you in court over the land issue? That's not the issue. Everybody is saying it. Say something else. Ah, I'm disappointed. You are a Christian. You are a lawyer. You were involved with this politician. You are a member of Covenant Christian Center. No. You should be the first person to say, it's all right. Don't explain. I don't want an explanation. I came here to hug you. I came with my husband to your house to let you know that though weeping endures for the night, imagine what it, listen, imagine the power. Imagine what happens to a person when you stand there to be the ones for them. If you cry, cry on me. Let your tears fall on my shirt as I hold you. Let us cry together. You just lost your child. Why were you that careless? Didn't you see it in the spirit? That's not the time to talk. Please, I apologize. Can you spare me just one minute? Let me just drop this and then we'll round up. Listen, our world is full of wicked people. Our world is full of heartless people. People will clap for you when you are on the throne. Sleep from the throne. Don't just fall. Just sleep from the throne. And they'll say, I always knew you were not my king. I'm a young man, but leadership has exposed me to a lot. I can tell you when you find people who love you unconditionally, swallow your pride and pursue them. You will not find many of that kind in your life. You may find a worker in your company. He may not be very intelligent, but he's the one who when they are chaining you and the news is picking it, he can stand there and say they should pick my face too. It is a token of my loyalty. You have to pray for these kinds of people in your company. Pray for these kinds of people in your life. This is how I pray. I don't pray carelessly. Lord, send me divine connectors. Send me men of influence. Send me gifted people. But in all your sending, send me burden bearers. Jesus is on his way to the cross. And people are laughing at him. He's looking at those who ate his fish. He's looking at those who took this. Crucify him. And he said, can you help? No, I will not help you. Crucify him. The blood coming from a 33-year-old's body. And they said, I always knew. To the point that they said, release Barabbas. Although a criminal, we prefer Barabbas. Be careful when people clap for you. They can clap you to your grave. Listen, Covenant Christian Center. Jesus falls and cannot get to Golgotha. Remember, if he died not on a tree, he could not become a curse. Because the law is cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. But in the midst of that, a man came, Simon of Cyrene. That was Africa picking the cross and saying, Jesus, as a continent, they may run away from you, but Africa will take you to the cross. We partook of the sufferings of Christ, and that is why the glory that follows must come upon the continent of Africa. I can imagine the relief. Simon, you are helping Jesus. Don't put yourself into that mess. And he said, no. I've set my hand on the floor. And he dragged the cross. Listen to me. Hold hands with someone by your left and right. This is a very serious issue. This is 2020. I cannot promise you that you will not have challenges. I only promise you victory. But between the challenge and the victory, you will not only need God, you will need men. Not men who want you to discuss everything about your life. 
What happened that you are no longer working? The last time you were CEO, I saw something in the news. What is it? It's not always about what happened. Can it now be about you? I'm more concerned about your victory than the job. What happened? Hmm. These are the keys of the kingdom that help us to reign. I only gave you two of them, but there are many more. These are the systems of the kingdom. When I found this in my life, I vowed a vow that Lord, if anyone is looking for a shoulder to cry, send me. Don't just send me to preach. Let me be a true confidant. Let me be one who can cry. I'm not ashamed and I'm not embarrassed. Let the world know that I not only preach, but I can help. We can cry together. Lift your voice and pray. Make me valuable. But send me help us, oh God. Send me help us. In the name of Jesus. Send me help us. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Is someone praying? Send me divine connectors. By the Spirit of the living God. Send me men of influence. Whose credibility and endorsement can lift me to another level. Send me gifted people to redeem time and produce efficiency. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.